one character is all it took to bypass the security of some of the world's largest companies and it's helped me make over fifty thousand dollars in bounties last year alone today i'm going to show you how understanding java's url handling can turn a secure application into an open book if you're not familiar with spring boot actuators they are diagnostics endpoints built into so many java applications that expose internal details like their health metrics configurations and even memory dumps these endpoints are incredibly powerful and they are dangerous if they are exposed as many of you may already know java applications are my favorite applications to hack on because they are a gold mine for bug bounty hunting and obviously with the industry moving forward and more and more scanners coming out it's becoming harder to find these obvious paths obviously this is the goal of having bug bounty programs and doing research we want to help secure the internet and with that comes developers that have become very much smarter and some who have started implementing strict access controls and denying these obvious paths. But here is the thing. There are two paths moving forward for hunters like us. First, you can still hunt for the harder to find actuators that still exist under these obscure API routes and you can also go after breaking reverse proxies. I want to tell you that they are still out there. They're just buried deeper in the application. Or our second approach, and this is where it gets really interesting, is when you can find these endpoints, but they're protected, you can always look for ways to bypass these and maybe eventually get access to these protected endpoints. The real value obviously comes when you get access to these endpoints. These interfaces, like I mentioned earlier, expose critical functionality they could expose routes http requests or even the environmental variables in some cases most importantly though is if you can access the heap dump through these endpoints then you have struck gold because these memory snapshots contain credentials session tokens and even sometimes you can get encryption keys and everything else you need to escalate your access across these systems let me show you quickly with this lab that i've created how you can exactly turn a simple url encoding into multiple five to ten thousand even twenty thousand dollar bounties depending on what these actual have access to as always if you want to test this out on your own you can go to hackingup.io i've made a hub called url maze you can look it up you can launch it it's 100 for free you don't have to pay a single dime for it all you have to do is sign up and just enjoy the free content all right let's jump into it so one of the biggest giveaways of things that i look for usually is this exact white label error page so if you see something like this usually it indicates that it is some sort of a java api a lot of times it indicates it could be Spring Boot. Lots of different things I could show this page. But when I see this is when I kind of get excited. There are two things that really make me excited when it comes up to Java apps. One is this one. And the second one is seeing a Tomcat page because it indicates it's Java and there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with it. A lot of times though, what you will see here is if you have an API, for example, in this one, you may not see that error page right off the bat. You might see some JSON text, but you can always trigger this by either going to a 404 page or finding some sort of a api endpoint that may give it 401 which the error would be 401 but you will see this white label error page come up which is a good indication now what gets really interesting here is if you look for actuator i'm going to type that into here you will see that it comes back with a forbidden this looks like very much something custom the thing that you have to watch for here is to understand is this being set up on a waf level or is it being set up on a routing or the back end level right because sometimes these companies have a big WAFs that are there using, then they block access to these API endpoints or these specific URL patterns and things like that, just as a measure of just security, which is hard to go around. Or sometimes they make rules on Nginx or their Tomcat or whatever the backend engine may be. They use some ruling that actually configures this and doesn't allow you to get access to it. The thing that I don't like about this is that it makes it hard for us to find what path it is that the actuator exists in. That means that actually it could be inside of the web route, like we're looking at right now in the example, or it could be in the API route, or even better if the API has some app name and then the actuator is inside of that. So we really need to figure out where it could be and we have to map out what this API looks like. One of the most common actuators that I see hackers are missed without any URL encoding tricks is that they don't look for these app names. So if you're having an application and there's an API back into it, so whether it's a slash API or it goes under a subdomain and has an API, you want to be able to look for it within your Kaido, Burb Suite or whatever web proxies that you use and see if you can map them out. And every time there is a micro application like this one on the screen in there, you want to try things like actuator. So in this case, we don't know where actuator is, but when we type in actuator, we know we're getting a custom error that says forbidden, not a 404, not an unauthorized. It just says forbidden, which looks kind of fishy. The key here is to observe these 
weird behaviors and draw conclusions and find ways to bypass it. What I want to do here is I'm going to make a quick spring boot actuator nuclei template. And this is actually uh, the default that was created by nuclei, uh, some of the folks over there on their templates folder. And what I'm doing here is uh, you can see I've created some custom stuff here that has the keyword actuator. But instead, what I've gotten used to is putting that percent %72 in my path, which is a URL encoded for the letter R. The other thing that I've recently started doing on my actual recon server is actually doing a percent %2572, which is a double encoded version of this, because depending on how they're doing these or how they're looking for these paths, sometimes you may be able to bypass them. And again, it all comes down to how they've done it, what the system looks like and things like that. But I have both of these as good measure to kind of see what could be uh, going on and what I can find. So now that we have all this, we're going to save it and we're going to go ahead and grab the URL for this. And I'm going to simply just do a check for this using Nuclei because it makes it easier for me to fuzz with Nuclei instead of doing it on my own. It looks like this one didn't work. We're going to try API because I know there's an API route that exists. And this one comes back and says, nope, nothing was found. And now for the moment of truth, we're going to try this with the app name. And I know there's an app name here called user MGM. This is from one of the examples that I had one of my recent bugs uh, it was some app name there and you type it in there and you can see it found our actuator here with the url encoding path and you can see that it fell with the regular r and it does have access to a couple of things including the heaped up so this is just step one just because you have found an actuator doesn't mean that you're going to get paid because sometimes these applications may not have anything most of the time they do but just because you have found one doesn't mean that it's vulnerable also keep in mind sometimes you may be able to bypass and get access to the actuator but then when you look at it none of these endpoints are actually available because they have actually uh, not exposed it so you can see when in this case we have beans we have health path and metrics and things like that but i'm going to just show you how to quickly just pull for the heap dump and what you can do with it so the key here now is again we're going to do a curl and we have our actuator and we're just going to download the heap dump using curl and then we're going to give it an argument for dash o and i'm going to tell it hey i want you to save this under heap dump and it's going to just do a little bit of work it's a larger file because it is a chunk of the memory and it's going to give us this file but if we open it it's going to look pretty ugly honestly in a real scenario what i will do is actually find a good IDE or software that I can load this heap dump into because you will get a better result and you get better information out of it per se than doing it with what I'm going to show you. But a lot of times I've done this and it's been very helpful. You need to know what you're looking for. So if you open it up and observe the memory in a actual software that's built for those heap dumps, you get better results because you can just browse through it. You can go through it. You can think about ideas and things that you want to look for, which is in my version of it is to actually just open it and feed it to strings, which makes it more readable. We're just telling it, hey, look for things that look like strings of text and show them to me, which this massive thing comes back and it's still messy. Where it gets interesting is if you know exactly what it is that you look for, you can use grep to find information. So in this case, I'm going to grep for maybe something like cookies, for example. We can see some tabs comes up. Nothing that's really that interesting. We can try things like password and that doesn't work either. Or we can just straight go for gold and try something like EYJ. And if you're not familiar with what EYJ is, you should be. This is an indication of JWT token because they always start with the letters EY capital J. And if I look for it, and then we can get a token for example here that gives us access. So this is why it is so important to know how to dive into a heap dump and also know what it is that you exactly are looking for so if you find a heap dump and you do your simple things like cookies and passwords and things like that don't forget there are specific api keys tokens or even sometimes the headers may be specific to this company so if your company uses x api token make sure you're typing it in there and looking for it and even sometimes let's go as far as looking for bearer which would give us the same exact result at this one it doesn't this time i also look for things like basic because if you do a basic authorization you may have some keywords in there but looking for these you can actually get access to a lot of apis and sometimes not only it leaks potential users data it could also leak potential api keys that belong to the employees which even gives you an elevated access than what you already have so keep that in mind the next time you're looking for actuators you get your heap dump you are fishing for credentials because reporting it by itself is a good bug but being able to show an actual impact of what you can get access to is a whole lot better all right that's it please do me a favor if you love these kind of contents and you want to see more of these hands-on exploitations drop me a comment let me know and if you haven't already do me a favor like this video and subscribe and become a homie and i will see you all in next week's video peace